ugly incident in African football, of course, it's uh, raising, uh, raising its ugly heads once again. Uh, Nigeria are threatening, of course, Super Eagles players are threatening to boycott Tuesday's game against uh, uh, the Mediterranean night of Libya following uh, the incident that they claim that they've been held hostage since Sunday after they got into that country. Welcome wherever you are on the face of the planet. My name remains Asha Lulua Femi. James Agrip is here. And um, these are issues that we've been talking about almost every now and then. And it's, um, it seems like we are sounding like a broken record. I don't know what else we need to say. James Agrip, you are welcome. Yeah, thank you very much, Femi. Uh, happy to be on today's edition. Okay, uh, James, let's just go straight into it. Of course, yesterday morning, the Super Eagles of Nigeria, uh, they flew uh, in, into Libya for the return leg of the double header for the 2025 Afghan qualifiers. And since yesterday, as a matter of fact, uh, according to feelers that we're getting uh, in Libya at this moment is that uh, the players and officials are still being held at the airport and um, at the uh, Abak airport since they flew in there. You know, originally where they were supposed to land, uh, the, the, the Libyans diverted their flight. They diverted the flight to where it would take them almost two hours to get to uh, the match venue. James, remember what happened in the first leg where uh, the captain of the Libya side came out to say that they received the uh, hostile treatment from Nigeria and he vowed that the Super Eagles should expect a similar thing. Then the NFF came out to say that they spoke with the, uh, the Libyan delegate and uh, they told them that they were going to inform the Federation when they get to Nigeria. And then when they got to Nigeria, they changed their itinerary and they ran into problems. And as a matter of fact, they confirmed that uh, the security arrangement for that the NFF made for them was actually what they used right here in Nigeria. Then people started asking then what is the evidence that um, you, you, you were maltreated by the Nigerian authorities? But here it is. There's been pictures flying all over the internet of Nigerian uh, players and officials being stranded at the Alabak airport. James, how, for how long is Africa going to do this? This, I can bet anything that you wouldn't see this in any part, any other part of the world. How long will Africa do this for the first time where we calf do something about uh, the, the gamesmanship that these North Africans keep, you know, putting up every time and putting African football in disrepute? I mean, I think that can only be answered by us. I mean, because this thing has been going on for too long and uh, they've continued to turn a blind eye to it. And it always comes from uh, a particular region of, uh, of Africa with the northern parts. You know, the, it's sad to say this, but I think it's so common with them. Uh, I mean, this win at all cost syndrome, ready to do anything to, to win and even go, going as far as getting violent. I mean, um, they, 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 they claim that when they came to Nigeria, they, 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 they were maltreated and what have you. So me, me, I think all those were just uh, cooked up stories. I think they, they already had this in mind that this is what they're going to do. Even before the first leg, I believe this, this was all well-scripted uh, stuff from them. You know, they're just trying to make up story. I mean, it's, it's Libya we're talking about here. I mean, this is not a superpower when it comes to African football. They are the weakest team in the North African side of, uh, you know, when you talk of the superpower in the North African football, you talk of the Egypt, you talk of Nigeria, Morocco, Tunisia. You don't mention Libya because they don't have any pedigree. So why would Nigeria want to go as low as trying to maltreat, uh, maltreat them? I mean, so for me, like I said, it's, 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 it's something that they've, they've planned. That this is what they're going to do because I, I I saw the the incident which they claim um, the, the they were maltreated. I mean, this is something that for if 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 you if you check it very well, you know that this is something that they plan. They decided they plan to get themselves into some kind of trouble, getting to Nigeria so that they will have something to hold on to. Like I saw a picture of them sitting down on 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 the ground at the airport. I mean, <laughs> I mean, they can't tell me that. To see, so they're just looking for something to just hold on to, like an evidence. I've been seeing on the social media that picture where they were sitting on the ground. I mean, like, show us any other um, stuff, you know, to back up your your evidence. That's not enough evidence to to warrant this kind of treatment, you know. So for me, they, they feel they don't stand a chance against the surprise because we saw what happened in the first leg, how they were falling out, but they just refused to play. They thought that maybe if they can nick a draw and go home and 
and and seal up the can meet up because they are bottom right now in the league uh, in the table one point in in uh, in uh, three games so they know that against Super Eagles is going to be a tall order you know so that's why they are doing all this I mean it, it's it's so dangerous because the team that that took off from Nigeria you diverted their plane to another destination that they knew nothing about you kept them at the airport for hours. You know, you know, deny them access of even I learned that some of the players they cannot even they, they deny them internet. You know, they deny them all sorts just because of of a football game. You know, so, so I mean, this thing everything stops on the table of calf. You know, because this has been going on for too long. I think this I don't want to believe the Nigerian government let this slide. I mean, I, I think this, this has gone beyond football now. I think because uh, we all know what Libya is these days is in terms of security wise it's not safe like that so i think uh, this is the time the, if, um, the Nigerian government should step in and let it know that this is a national issue now it goes beyond football now because i can't imagine for just a 90 minute game and you, you decide to subject professional players to this kind of treatment that you think you're going to get if they get away with this then i'll know that calf calf has decided to, to continue to to ruin african football you know, if, if nothing is done and this and they allow this to go and Nigeria gets walked over by Libya, then I know that um, there is more to it. It's, it has gone beyond. Okay. Football. Okay. Well, you, you you can you can see that again, James, because if you look at it, even politically, uh, Libya is a country that is being governed or that is being ruled by many forces. As a matter of fact, yesterday the president of the football association resigned. You know, he resigned because of some certain issues in the country's football, you know, and because there was, uh, according to what they say, gang up of uh, the clubs uh, in, in Libya. So it, it all uh, turmoil, it all chaos, chaotic, each, each turn you, you make regarding uh, uh, football in Libya. Now, James, super good players are threatening to quit the game or not to go ahead because, like you said, uh, they are not guaranteed uh, safety in that game. Would you say that they will be justified if they do not go ahead? Because now, before we actually came up here, you and I were talking about um, the, the possible sanctions. But we've seen this play out time and time again, and CAP doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So if uh, uh, Nigeria decides not to go ahead with this game of the players, because mentally they are already even jaded, because they've already created an impression in their mind, or the Libyans have created an impression in their mind, in the mind of the Super Eagles players, that you aren't safe in our country. Now, if Nigeria decides not to go ahead, do you think that it, if CAF appealed to Nigeria to go ahead with the game, would you be justified for Nigeria not to go ahead? And you know what happens? Because at the end of the day, CAF might say, we, we ask you or we implore you to go ahead and you 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 kick the games. Hopefully, uh, in the day, of course, we'll get uh, an angle from CAF. But in this instance, do you think that Nigeria would be justified not to go ahead with this game? Yeah, they, they would. I mean, I mean, I mean, you you you've had your itinerary. This is what you plan to do, and your host country deliberately destroyed everything. For me, they did, they, they destroyed everything because you diverted one, you divided, you diverted their plane to another destination. You now kept them at the airport, locked them up there. No food, no 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 um amenities, I nothing uh um, for them to you know. I mean, who was going to now come out and say you want to play in such a mindset. You know, I mean, it's a mind game thing. And um, I think uh, until Cap steps in, like I said, I mean, this is going to continue. I think they, they just have to, it depends on the kind of um, case the NFF, Nigerian side, uh, put up to, to Cap. Because it's not as if they didn't make the trip. They make the trip, but their plans and everything was disrupt, deliberately disrupted by the host country, you know, claiming on uh, the claims of uh, they were maltreated and no, no strong evidence to, to prove that. And even the NFL had to come out and even make statements explaining their side what really happened in Nigeria, you know. So, I mean, if the player decide to, to say they are, they are not going to play the game, I know that we might attract sanction from CAF, but I think uh, it's going to be a justified one because, I mean, nobody's going to play the, the, right, the, the players right now, they are not in the right state of mind. You know, and um, I mean, because they will be fatigued already. I mean, you've not eaten for hours, no water, nothing. So, what kind of um, state of mind are you going to take the pitch? All those, they, 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 because Libya wants to win by all means, because they know that they don't stand a chance in that group. They, they feel the best way to go out with is to, to, to follow this route. You know, I've, I, 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 I hope that the, the Nigerian government, the NFL, take this up seriously. Maybe you should have a lesson to other teams who only other countries who go about 
you know, doing this to, to, to visiting teams. I mean, they also need a game of football. If you're not good in football, you're not good. You know, so, I mean, you just have to be not anybody for that you're not good when it comes to sport, you know. But going through this means try to try to, to, to win. I think they've taken this, this too far, and I hope that the Nigerian government will also step in and make an example of, of teams like Libya, that you don't do things like this. James, I, I think at the end of the day, I, trust me, I think diplomacy will, will prevail. But, I, but again, the most important thing, like you've uh, rightly highlighted, is the safety of Nigerian players and officials, of which I think CAF will not be able to guarantee because of what will happen in the stadium. We've seen uh, North African uh, fans bringing laser you know, to, to, uh, to, to the stadium, despite the fact that they've been warned several times you know, not to do such. So, we hope that CAF will do the right thing at this at, at this point. Um, James, let's take a trip to Ghana. Of course, you knew what happened. Uh, Gula is in the first leg of the double header against Sudan. And um, it's Ghana again, they are on the edge, James. Uh, they have a must win game um, in Libya, uh, uh, coincidentally, because of the war going on in Sudan. Uh, that game will be played in Libya as well. So we hope that uh, uh, the Black Stars will not, so certainly I know that they will not be uh, given a Ulster uh, treatment as the Super Eagles are getting right now. Uh, James, um, of course, Otuado has said he doesn't bother about statistics, but all he wants is to win this game. And if you look at the table uh, in Group F, the Black Stars, after three matches, they have only two points, James. Angola have maximum nine, then Sudan, Sudan have four. It is a make or mark game for Ghana. If Sudan win this game, I think Ghana might just be out of half gone. How disastrous is that going to be, James? Uh, I mean, uh, it's sad that uh, the Black Stars, after the good um, things they did during the World Cup qualifier, you know, we all expected them to now build on that in the African qualifier alone. Uh, fortunately, it has not been um, losing for them. In three games, they failed to win a game, just one point. In three games, you know, but um, all of is not yet lost. They still have. Um, I think they can. They can. They can. They can start that revival by getting a good, a good result against Sudan. The first leg in Accra is not as if they did that bad, but they were, they were just so terrible in front of them. They, yeah, I they didn't take their chances. Was, no, they whoever, their chances. You know, yeah, somebody that didn't watch the game, you would think um, Sudan. Sudan may played very well. That's why the Black Stars couldn't. Um, couldn't win. But Femi, yeah. you watch that game, you know that the Black Stars played them out down, but they just just poor, 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 poor scoring ability. I mean, so could do so, edge. Yeah. You know, go a uh, clear, clear scoring chances that you see them put away week in, week out in that club side. But against Sudan, I saw players um coming face to face with the keeper and they and they, they missed chances in front of goal. I think it was produced who who had the whole post himself and decided to play back to the goalkeeper. So it wasn't before I, I don't I, you can't blame Motohado for that. He's not going to teach, you're not going to teach uh, top professionals like that how to how to convert their chances. In terms of um, the play, they, they have played Sudan. But I mean, because, because of poor marksmanship, they just just fails to score. I mean, so like I said, they all look with no loss. They, I believe they, they have what it takes. If they can just try and get take their chances, you know, to I think kickstart their their Afghan qualifier because I mean uh, after they did well in the World Cup qualifier, everybody expected them to, you know, to build on this. But I mean, it's like, the reverse is the case now. They are just so terrible in this um Afghan qualifiers. He lost against um the Angola at home, he threw away. Um then the next game again, when, when everybody talks, maybe they'll bounce back and Get their campaign back on track. They, they threw again, you know. And now they are going away to Sudan. I mean, um, it's going to be though they are going away. They are going to play in Libya. Funny enough, that's the same country that Super Eagles are being held this week. Why Ghana? They are already in uh, in Libya, you know. So for me, since it's, it's a neutral venue, I think it should favor them, you know, because um, Sudan they are not playing in front of their fans. So for me, I think the neutral venue. So if you even count that an advantage for the Black Star, but it now depends on. On how they're going to go about it, whether they're going to take their chances now, because the basketball scoring goals, you know, when you don't score goals, I mean, you're not going to win uh, games. So that's what affected them the first leg. But I, like I said, I believe uh, all of is not a loss. The, the, all they need is just to take their chances, and I believe they can, they can just build up from there. 
Yeah, you, you know, we talked about uh, Ghana getting uh, an out and out striker and the importance of that in the Black Stars team. I think that is actually what is happening now because since Asamoah Gyan uh, retired from the national team, the Black Stars have been unable to get someone like that. And we know we've talked about maybe Naki Williams, you know, not doing what he's supposed to do. But again, Naki Williams, you said, uh, is not an out and out striker. So hopefully the Black Stars will, they will get back to reckoning. They play, of course, uh, tomorrow. James, let's look at, at Group G. Group J, uh, where we have Cameroon, Zimbabwe, and Kenya, that that's group is it's not been very easy for uh, the Indomitable Lions. As a matter of fact, you have Zimbabwe, five points, just two points by Indomitable Lions. And the surprise team, as a matter of fact, as far as I'm concerned, is Kenya. Kenya have four points after three matches. And James, I don't know if it's going to feel if you, if you find Kenya at the AFCON, because you have to look around if it's an Olympics. <laughs> no, Kami, uh, Kami, um, Kenya. They, they've been to the AFCON before, so it's not as if they've, yeah. they've never played at They have been a while, so, been a while, though. Yeah, I know, I know, you know, but they, they've been at the AFCON before, so... Um, um, I think they, they, they're doing well now in the group stage. It doesn't come to a surprise. I, I'm not surprised because uh, they are not that... So fine, you cannot rank them among the elites when it comes to African football, but we know where their strength lies. When it comes to the marathon and the Olympics, you know that you don't go near the Kenyans. You know, but when it comes to football, you know where yeah, you place them. You know, but they, they for me, they 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 are doing well. Um, nobody expected them to to they, they, a lot of people expected them to be like the whipping team, but I think they are holding their own. Maybe the performance of teams like Mauritania, you know, uh, at the last Afcon kind of uh, spot other you know other team that if you get if you go to the Afcon, you can do what these other teams. So maybe that's what you are saying. I mean, it's a very tight group. You thought by now Cameroon would have been out of sight, but the other teams are not making life easy for them at all. They are ready to to hold their own against um, and Cameroon. You know, it's, it's good for African football. You know, I mean, when when um, qualifiers like this, you don't just expect just one team to just stream all the other teams. I mean, let it be competitive. Let it be tough so that you know that uh, football in Africa is growing. Not that when when you check out the group, you just conclude that okay, this team is. These teams will qualify, these teams are going out. I mean, as it is now, it's not session for any of the teams. Qualification is not yet guaranteed. You know, so everybody still have to fight it out. And um, I, I think it's a good one, you know, but at the end of the day, you still want to see teams like Cameroon, you, you still need it with all the experience and all that, you know. But uh, it's, it's good for African football. Okay, James, lastly, let's look at Group L, where you have uh, Burkina Faso, Senegal, Burundi, and Malawi. Burkina Faso are talking that group, even though they play the game more, they have um, 10 points. As a matter of fact, you, you can as well just say that uh, qualification is sealed for, for Burkina Faso. Senegal are second on the table with seven points. James, I wouldn't know, though, they played, um, they will be playing uh, Malawi uh, tomorrow. James, would you say that perhaps the, the, the Senegal FA, maybe they, they expected too much from um, uh, Ali Sisi, or perhaps these are instances that they, they saw and why they decided not to increase his, uh, uh, in, in renew, I should say, his contract. Because when you looked at that um, that statement that they put out after they said that they were not going to uh, renew his statement, uh, his, his contract, I beg your pardon, you would know that there's actually something, you know, uh, uh, more than what you can see. Because if you're saying, if you're saying a, a country fell from 17th to 21 on the FIFA ranking. I, I, I don't know how much of a significance uh, that is, the significance that is, but they are second on the table and they are still on point to qualify. But would you say you're surprised that Burkina Faso is, is almost running away with uh, uh, the group, uh, leading the group? Uh, me, I, I'm not surprised. Uh, when it comes to African football, um, I think I, um, Burkina Faso, they've, they've held their own. Um, runners up at the AFCON, they just are lucky to come up against Nigeria. You finished third place before, so they they topping the group. It doesn't come as a surprise to me. They have been doing so so well. But what they just need now is to crown their efforts by winning the AFCON. There is not something that easy, but I think they've been knocking on the door. So I'm not surprised about uh, what they are doing in the group stage. You know, so um, it's a good one for them. I I think they. They've they've, come, they've they've come, they've qualified. I think they, they've qualified, you know. So, so it's a good one for them, uh, you know. 
Uh, for Senegal, um, Femi, I don't like what you said. I, I think it's a deliberate, um, um, what do you call it? It's a deliberate move by the Senegal FA to do a UTC. I think they just, they just wanted somebody else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but for me, he has done well for himself. I mean, for many years, how many African countries can boost up a local coach that stayed that long? And he, he proved himself by winning the African, qualified them for two World Cups. I mean, so for me, he has paid his dues. So it's for him to now try his hand in any other, in other, um, other jobs. I believe um, he's not going to stay out of jail for a very long time. Mm -hmm. you know? So for me, uh, they are not, um, they are not doing that bad. You know, but I believe that they are still going to qualify. They are very much on the experience side. You know, so uh, even though they are not going to top the group, uh, they are going to finish second. And the most important thing is to qualify for the African, and that I believe they are going to achieve. Okay, James. Maybe just to mention in Group G, you know, a rookie coach is is becoming um, a celebrated coach. I'm talking about Mas Fai of Ivory Coast. They have nine points from three matches, and uh, Zambia are next to them, four points in, in Group at uh, Group G. I think uh, this actually also boils down to the fact that African coaches are improving. You know, he was an assistant at the Afcon, and of course, he took the job. Uh, maybe on a temporary basis and went ahead to win the Afcon for uh, the Ivorians. Now he's proving it in the qualifier. So it's, it's actually a good one for, uh, for for African coaches. If you look around now, how many foreign coaches do you even have, you know, uh, particularly in the in the sub-Saharan western part of Africa? <laughs> you, it, it, it's hard to see. Okay, James, let's just look through uh, the features for uh, this, um, the return leg of, uh, I, I may have to say, March the 4th of the 2025 African qualifiers. Today, we have Gambia. They'll be taking on Madagascar. Those two countries, we saw them at the last AFCON. Uh, then also, we have Togo, Austin, Algeria. Then on Tuesday, you have Sudan versus, uh, um, of course, Sudan versus Ghana. That is a make or mark game for the Black Stars. A defeat would possibly just tell the Black Stars you wouldn't be appearing at the next AFCON in Morocco next year. And, I don't know how much, how disastrous that is going to be for the Black Stars. Then you have Malawi hosting Senegal, Rwanda versus Benin. That is going to be another crack at the first leg, and they're 3 0 in favor of Benin uh, in Africa, in Ivory Coast. Then Mauritania versus Egypt, Nigeria versus Angola, Syria alone versus Ivory Coast, Guinea Bissau versus Mali. Then you have Congo versus South Africa. Then we have Central African Republic, they'll be hosting Morocco. Uh, then you have Libya versus Nigeria. That game, it is still not certain. Because I don't know the amount of psychological boost that will be injected into those super good players now because of what they've gone through. Some of them have never been through that in their life. To be locked up in a place for several hours when you are not a prisoner, when you are not um, in, in, in some form of cage, then you have Comoros versus uh, at Tunisia. So these are matches that are slated for uh, tomorrow. James, final word, Nigeria versus uh, Libya versus Nigeria. In your, would you advise the players not to actually uh, go ahead with the game because of, I don't know. Yeah, like I said earlier, um, I don't think it's going to be a good idea for them to to play because even what uh, the captain has said in his tweet, uh, that um, I mean, it would be unwise uh, um, for them to continue with the journey. You know, even if they allow them to to go get to the to the uh, to the hotel because. Uh, he was in, he was um focal, he was talking about they don't know the kind of food water that they are, that they are going to serve at the uh, at the hotel to be better for them to just um allow the game to slide and um you know so for me I I want to agree with him because I mean there's no point going ahead with the game and um I expect the Nigerian government to step in the NFF to, to do something. I can't allow this to be, to just go like that, you know, because this, this is Nigeria today. We don't know another thing that uh, we, we go through this kind of um, experience. Uh, I, I think when they played against uh, the Benin Republic or uh, Rwanda, I don't think uh, the Rwandese went through this kind of um, experience. But what would be like when it got to the Super Eagles, um, they decide to come up with this kind of antics, you know. So they, I do they feel that um, this is the only way they can get over the super league because they know that um, they don't stand a chance. You know? So for me, I, I I hope that this kind of this is going to backfire on them and they're going to pay heavily for it. But you don't treat um, the visitor like this. I mean, it goes to show that um, uh, they, they don't have any other way of winning a football match other than going through this kind of antics. You know. So for me, I'll stand with the captain. I I don't want to. 
I don't think uh, anybody in the right frame of mind will want to go ahead with such a game because psychologically you're really down. So what kind of um, mindset are you going to take onto the pitch? You know, so for me, uh, I think it's just it's just let like, they should not they should not even go ahead with the game. Whatever is going to so happen, let give, it happen. They should give the Libya three points. <laughs> no, it depends on it depends on the kind of um, action the Nigerian government and FF will take. I mean, you, 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 the, the team traveled. It's not as if they, they didn't travel. They traveled. They were there. They, they followed every uh, everything that is supposed to be done. But the host country decided to come up with these antics and they have they have their plane. Okay, what, what if something happened? You have the plane that was meant for a particular destination. You have it. What if something happened to the plane? You know, so what are you going to see? Because you are, you are, you are, you are trying to play antics. You know, you now delay them at the airport from okay from for more than for more than uh, the ten hours. I mean, who does that? You know, so I I expect serious sanction, serious action from the Nigerian side of things. So what comes to what comes to my head right now is maybe Cav can postpone this game and maybe fix it for a neutral venue. I think that is going to be uh, what is going to solve everyone. Maybe for tomorrow the game can be put on note. You know, you shouldn't be allowed to go tomorrow. Then fix the game for a neutral venue and any of the teams that doesn't show up will go for fit three points. As a matter of fact, I think that is what I want. That is besides a very, very big, big sanction on uh, on Libya. Wherever you are across the, across the world, and as an African, what do you think? Do you think it will still be justifiable for Nigeria to go ahead with this game with all that they've been to? Their plan was originally scheduled to land the Benghazi, then the Libyans diverted it to, uh, to another airport where they've been held hostage for 10 hours. 10 hours in the 21st century. Let us know what you think in the comment section. James Agberibi, thank you for your thoughts on the show. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Simon. See you next time. Okay, so we get our fingers crossed as far as this issue uh, is concerned. And of course, we'll be coming uh, to you right there with every other thing that Cav will be, uh, will be uh, putting out right there. I wish you a very fantastic week ahead. I remain, Ashan Lulu, we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Yeah.